Folks, I'm sitting right now in front of easily the craziest collection that I have ever bought. Yesterday, I took two plane rides, a very long Uber trip, and a much shorter cargo van ride to arrive here in Connecticut from Kentucky to buy the collection of none other than RGT85. Sean, thank you so much for having me out. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, thanks for buying my stuff and making it nice and easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to. So tell me about some of the stuff that is sitting here. I wanna ask you about like some of the hidden gems and the coolest items, but first I am curious, when did this collection start and why'd you decide to sell? So I would say most of this collection started about um, 15 years ago or so. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the items are a little bit older, but I've always, you know, just loved video games, been around video games, all that sort of stuff. And I would say, you know, at the time the collection kind of started just out of necessity because, you know, accessing these games and stuff wasn't all that easy unless you actually had you know, a physical copy of the game or something like that. So yeah. it's definitely grown, but you know, as time has gone on, I've been collecting less and less. And you know, just for me, the the hobby just, you know, it's, it's no longer, you know, for me. I, I'm not really into just collecting a bunch of games to sit on a shelf. I'd rather, right. you know, it's always more so been about the games themselves, yeah, not like necessarily. Yeah, not necessarily just having a big, collection just to have a big collection and yeah. go, oh, look at my collection, you know? Totally. But yeah, there's tons of uh, just random stuff in here. Mm -hmm. um, some homebrew stuff, uh, Street Fighter of Rage 2, which is a Street to Rage 2 hack that has Street Fighter characters in it. Uh-huh. Mega Man, which was the Game Gear version of Mega Man ported to the Master System. I have I have amassed, you know, Penn and Teller, Smoke and Mirrors. Who doesn't <laughs> love Penn and Teller? I believe this game was completed, but never officially released. They should have had an official release. Least. Those I mean, guys are great. Yeah, you know, if you ever want to play some NES games on your Dreamcast, we have NES games <laughs> on Dreamcast. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I need to see the back of that. That's crazy. All sorts of fun stuff, because I've amassed just, you know, from companies sending me stuff and just weird odds and ends. Yeah. And it's been a crazy journey with a lot of a lot <laughs> of different things involved in it. This has to be one of the randomest bins that you have. And by the way, folks, what I didn't tell you is this is just one room of three that we're going to visit today that has part of his collection stored in it. I mean, it's a crazy amount of stuff. So, <laughs> We've got a little Game, Game Boy, Boy fanny here. pack. Yeah, I, I actually specifically bought this for a convention. Just yeah. To just to wear it. It's there. amazing to have these things to rock at convention, whether you're like bringing cash around or for small pickups or that kind of thing. Look at this Saturn little disc case here. I don't know if I've ever seen, is this like an OEM one or is that yeah. a sticker? No, it's, a, it's an OEM one that I bought at a uh, convention. Um, I think I paid five bucks for it and there's just some random, I know this is worth a lot of money, but it's kind of in scuffed condition. Yeah. Um, but you know, like a demo disc and if you need a cheat system for your uh, DS Lite for Pokemon and stuff. And yeah. Other stuff, I got you covered. These are more official products. Um, E-reader bundle. That's crazy, by the way. Yeah, this, this has got to be super rare. Yeah, it is. It comes with the E-reader, the cards, and then the Game Boy Advance system, so that you can essentially. It, and it's it's very wonky how it works, like to get everything like working. Like you have to slide all these different cards just to play yeah. Donkey Kong Country Jr. It's like, this is not convenient at That's all. That's wild. And then there, you know, there's some, some collector's editions of stuff in here, uh -huh. stuff that I have digitally that I reviewed. And it's like, oh, I want to get the physical version too. And it's like, do I really want to get the physical version? Yes. And then in here, we've got a whole bunch of Switch stuff. Yeah, more Switch stuff in here. Uh -huh. A lot of sealed games, games that I bought digitally, and that's eh, kind of getting up there. You know, it's getting a little more rare. It is, yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of games that I've purchased digitally or gotten review codes for digitally that I wanted to buy the physical version of the game, and mm -hmm. then it was kind of like, why did I do that? That one's getting pretty pricey, too. Yeah, it sure is. Did you use the Pokeball Plus on that? Yeah, I did. No, Mew's gone. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, so what makes it so val valuable if you have a new one is that Mew is still on the Pokeball, because that's the only way you can get you in that game. But yeah, some super rare stuff, limited run stuff, just. Yeah, a bunch of 32X it looks like over here. Yeah, you pretty much have a full 32X collection except for um, two of the games. How many games were on that system? Uh, 38. 
Oh, okay. Wow. That's another thing that you just don't see a whole lot. And folks, if you're feeling at all like, oh, there's so much good stuff in these bins that we're not getting to unpack, never fear. I'm going to dedicate a whole video to doing a deep dive into this collection, which I'm really excited for. So stay tuned for that. Please tell me I'm not editing that. Check this out, though. A complete Dance Dance Revolution Mario mix. Yeah, that's one of the older items in the collection. I've had that probably since I was like 18. So that's almost 20 years old. <laughs> but yeah, and I'm some totally Jam and Earl. Um, and this, you've still got it. Or is this the box? Just the box for the one that you, oh no, there it is. Yeah, you have it here. So some things, some things are a bit of a mismatch. Yeah. But I do have the new uh, Evercade system. So don't get mad at me, internet. Like. <laughs> still a gamer, believe it or still, not. I'm still a and gamer. Some people may start calling you a fake gamer. That I've always been called a fake gamer, but. They'll probably call me. They, I mean, if that's if that's what they're calling me, that's one <laughs> of the nicer things that they're calling me, so. But yeah, some, some weird promo <laughs> items for like the Toe Jam and Earl, um, the newer edition game that they did. And uh -huh. They sent me like a promo box. Yeah, just a lot of a lot of weird odds and ends. Some boxed consoles. Yeah. Of course. A lot of PlayStation stuff here. Yeah. Well, what a lot of people may not realize is that you're actually keeping a good chunk of your collection still. Yeah, I mean, I'm keeping some things um, that I find to be reminiscent of, you know, of a certain event. Yeah. Or something I can just put my finger on in memory of and be like, okay, I remember playing this, you know, with this person, or this is why I want to keep this. So sure. more sentimental stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm curious what stuff you decided to keep versus sell. For that part of the conversation, though, we'll head down stairs to the collection shelf. That's right. Folks, by far the most common question that I get asked when I do a video like these is, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that. Where will you be selling it? Where can I buy it? And the answer is that a lot of this stuff is going to get sold in our next Whatnot stream on Wednesday. The link to that's gonna be in the description. We were going to have, as you can see over here, a little Game Boy stream, and that is still happening, but we're basically also taking a lot of RGT's stuff and combining it into one mega live auction. A lot of this stuff is gonna be in the buy it now as well, so if you want to see what we've already listed, you can check the link now and a lot of stuff will be live. We'll basically be selling a ton of either bundles of games that are like low dollar or like some of the higher dollar like uncommon games as well. And a lot of obscure items that just for whatever reason uh, don't fit on Amazon. We'll have plushes, we'll have like random single games, we'll have emulation consoles, we'll have miscellaneous collectibles and box stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. One of my favorite items that I found that we're going to gonna have in this next show is a set of Street Fighter shot glasses. So thanks a bunch, Sean, for these. Uh, there's a lot of really fun items that are going to be in there. We'll also have the return of the Mission Switch, both cases while supplies last. These are our multi-game cases that you can put your loose Switch games in, which I'm really proud of. We kind of have the old and the new represented there. These guys are just $15, which is convenient because when you sign up for the first time for whatnot with the link below, you get 15 bucks in credit that you can spend not just on one of these but on literally anything that we list it's going to be a great time hope to see you guys there and thanks a bunch to whatnot for sponsoring so folks this is it the iconic RGT85 basement and gamer setup. Looks pretty incredible. This is the behind the scenes where the magic happens. Thanks for having me down here. Yeah, apologies, uh, apologies it's not super clean. <laughs> no, that's I... all right. Hey, it's it's authentic. Tell me about, you have a pretty incredible toy collection that I honestly didn't really realize initially. Uh, what was it that made you decide not to sound like a greedy, greedy reseller here, but uh, not to sell the toys, but to sell the games? So, um, you know, I didn't really have many toys growing up. Like, like with an X-Men thing, you know, some kids had like five, six of them. I had like one, I had an X-Man. I yeah. had a Ninja Turtle. I like toys because I feel like, you know, with a video game, it's kind of like you could still experience the, the full experience that a video game has to offer you via emulation. Right. Whereas a toy, you don't, you know, you don't get that same sort of feeling. You don't get the, the, the packaging and the, the actual look of the toy. I used to never really, like there was a time, like when I first started filming here, a lot of these toys I did not have. You know, yeah. this is just stuff I've actually started, I guess I, I still am a collector. I just moved on to toys. But like the Hasbro's over there, I, I was actively collecting those for a little while and I just have like the more expensive, cause it's like, you know, these old toys, it's like gold, you know, it's <laughs> like gold video games. Like everything is worth stupid amounts of money. But yeah, I just felt like the toys, you know, cause like the, the thing of it is, I'm not necessarily selling this stuff for money. It's right. not like, it's not like I'm, I'm, I need, you know, I have some big thing that I need to, 
to, to pay off or something like that where I need to sell all my stuff. Sure. It's more so just, I just wanted to sell it because it's like someone else can experience, you know, someone, because you know, the games that are on the shelf, they've been shelf games since I yeah. moved here. Let's be realistic. 99% of the stuff has just been sitting on the shelf because I'm always doing other stuff and having to dig out a console, having to dig out something just to play an individual game. Yeah. Cause I didn't have a good setup like that. It's like, you know, it's not worth it to me. You know, I'd rather someone else have a chance to experience a game than it just sit on the shelf and rot away. Totally. Yeah, and my completely unbiased perspective is that honestly, as much as people like take issue with and make fun of flipping games, like you also could make a case that like to hoard a whole bunch of stuff that you're never gonna use is also not the best thing to do. No, cause I mean, it's just, it's just like literally like this shelf, this stuff has not moved yeah. since I moved in. It's like, well, why aren't you playing your old games? Because I have a million ways to play these games. <laughs> right. Every, my, my phone can play these games and it's a lot more convenient than digging out a system. And there's nothing wrong, let me get this out of the way. There's nothing wrong with collecting. There's nothing wrong with having your collection and playing the old stuff. But totally. just, just for me personally, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a priority anymore. So I'm really curious. I want to know, because this is the last shelf of stuff that has not been boxed up. So we'll get to that in a little bit. This is the shelf of games that you did decide to keep for your personal collection. So Correct. walk me through some of these items and what significance they might have to you and why they're still here. So pretty much all of these games, I have an emotional connection with just based on the fact that like, I could think of a specific memory of something and yeah. tie it with the game. So like Double Dragon, I remember this uh, family was babysitting me and they had a, a kid who was like nine or 10 years old and I was like six or seven. They're like, you ever played Double Dragon before? Like, oh, what's that? <laughs> So we played it there and I was blown away by it. Super Mario Brothers, first NES game I played. Yeah. Tyson's Punch-Out, stuff like that. The Zeldas, I just kept because they're crispy, honestly. Ken Griffey's yeah, winning run. Nice. I remember going into KB Toys and you hear that that theme song that it has. No, stop this. No, stop. And you would just hear it all throughout KB Toys. Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and then you'd see the game. Uh, the Gold Edition, Collector's Edition is actually a funny story. I came home from middle school when I was uh, 13 and there was a package from Nintendo at the door addressed to me. What? And I opened it up and it was this. And I was like, oh, they sent this to me because I'm a fan of Nintendo. And I called my mom <laughs> at work. I was like, you'll never believe what they sent me. And she was like, no, I, I bought that for you. It was supposed <laughs> to be a, a gift. I was like, oh, okay. It's like some Nintendo of the- Nintendo sending all their fans free games. Yeah. Like some of the Switch stuff I'm keeping just cause I, maybe I don't have a digital copy of it or something like that. Or just, yeah. I, I really like it. You know, a lot of it doesn't have like a super emotional attachment to it or anything like that. Like, you know, my, I have a, um, a PC that emulates all my stuff that I have set up like a TV, like, you know, like a console setup. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can play pretty much everything that you're seeing here on these shelves on that, but it's like, I still want to have some things, you know, a lot of Sega Genesis memories growing up, huge Garfield fan. I remember renting Shaq Fu a ton. Yeah. Um, Sonic Spinball, always just loved the soundtrack to that game. Greatest Heavyweights, me and my grandpa used to play this game. It was the only game he would look at because it had boxing people and stuff on it. 32X, this is what made me fall in love with the system, these two games. Yeah, um, okay, so two out of the 38 are staying with you apparently. Yeah. Um, are these manuals? What are these, guides? These are, oh, this isn't even set up, folks. This is the complete Sega 32X guide written by Sean Long, available on Amazon right now. Whoa, are you see? okay. <laughs> Sounds like a plug. I genuinely did not know that. That's so cool, dude. Yeah, I'll give you one. Yeah, I, I got bored and I wrote a book on the 32X uh, a couple <laughs> years ago. Wow, well, yeah, if you have played all the games, you're you're the expert. Yeah, but yeah, like most of the stuff, like, you know, Chenmu, that was a, a, an amazing game for me. Grandia 2, for some reason, I stayed up for like 26 hours straight and played that game. <laughs> These are important. These were given to me by a fan. Milton, shout outs to Milton. Panzer and Dragon Force, like, just, it, it, it just blew me away. It was like that, those two games. Like, if I had to sell everything, those two games would be the last games that I sold. The ones that have like the real emotional weight, not just to the games, but also to how you got them. Right, right, yeah. But yeah, you know, just a, a smaller downside. I'm still buying stuff. Like I'm still buying games that I specifically want to have for whatever reason. It's just, I don't need a bunch of stuff that just sits there and does nothing. Totally understand. Well, let's make our way over to the NES, Super Nintendo, basically the old school Nintendo shelf here. And I'm actually gonna, as we're packing these up, ask you some questions about these. Yeah, sure. All right, so as we're starting to pack some of this stuff up, are there any like specific gems that I should be aware of? One 
thing that I love to see is all of the top labels <laughs> on these. There's which, a very, very funny story. Oh my gosh, on, on N64 games makes a huge difference just in terms of like visibility and being able to see a lot of games at once. As far as like the hidden gems and stuff are concerned, I would say most of it, you know, we got like Mischief Makers on the N64. Yeah. That's a super underrated game. Uh, Mickey Speedway USA is actually really good. It's a um, Mario Kart clone yeah. that like nobody ever really talks about. I don't know why. Huh. Um, but there's like super Famicom stuff in here. There's Famicom stuff in here. Famicom disc system stuff. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of different sort of um, games. You know, Pokemon Snap. I, I actually really like that game. I'm surprised. That What's your favorite N64 game if you had to say? Super Mario 64. Yeah. Because I mean that was just the one that just blew me away. Yeah, it was it was genre defining for sure. We will change the system. Why did you decide specifically to sell this way? Because I was taking a look at your comment section when you uh, announced that you were going to sell to me, and it seemed split just about 50-50 of people saying, hey, Phoenix Resale, love that guy, and people saying, how could you? He's a dirty reseller, he'll scam you, he only cares about money. All right, so first and foremost, everyone who is selling retro video games is a reseller. <laughs> this isn't new product that people are getting. Right. No, I mean, if people don't understand, it's not easy to sell, you know, a decent amount of games. You know, if you're talking about a handful of games, everyone's lining up. But once you start talking about like, like bigger money and stuff, it, it's a lot of people don't want to do that. They're still holding out in the mentality of, well, you know, maybe I'll get a Facebook deal or I'll get like a collection or an estate. And it's like, yeah, you might. You yeah. know what, that might happen to you, but more than likely, you know, no. So I had talked to several different people um, while I was, you know, trying to figure everything out. And honestly, you were the easiest one to deal with. And you gave me a very fair price that I was happy with and you're happy with. And really at the end of the day, when you're talking about vintage anything, you know, the only value is what you give it, you know, yeah. if, if you have something that's worth $500 and somebody offers you $100 for it and you're happy with that $100, yeah. that's all that matters at the end of the day. Now granted, he paid a little bit more than $500 for this collection, but. <laughs> Cause you, and you've mentioned publicly the overall value of the collection, right? Not really, but I mean, I know, I stopped inventorying stuff and it was like a brand new car, you know, sort of sort of value. And I was yeah. just like, well, you know, that's anyone who has any sort of knowledge about this stuff, they could probably take a pretty good guess at, you know, a, a decent value amount for it. Sure. And uh, yeah, we're, we're not gonna get into specific numbers in this video. I try to be as transparent as I can, but those of you who watch me, you have an idea of the kind of percentages that I pay for this kind of stuff. And more than anything, I just appreciate you having me out. This is. Honestly, I can say the craziest collection that I've ever bought. Oh yeah, man, no problem. Thanks for uh, taking it off my hands and being easy about it. Yeah. You know, I sold, I tried to sell some stuff um, when I bought my place, just, just some basic stuff. And it was so, it was like pulling teeth and it wasn't even that big of a lot. It was just like some random DS RPGs and stuff like that. And like all of the people that I thought would be jumping all over it, they wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah, it is. It can be surprising too, also how much of an issue cash flow can be for video game right. stores. If you have a collection that you're talking about five figures, a lot of them just don't necessarily have that stocked up because you know running a game store is really expensive. Exactly. All right, folks, the shelf has been cleared and now it's time to move in to room number three, which is, it looks like your arcade one-up collection room. I don't know if I've ever seen a one-up collection this big with the corresponding posters. Yeah, that was an important thing. Like, I really needed to make sure I have the posters. I have a, there's fancy, there's got the LED lights, but the remote is usually there. So. Okay, <laughs> but and then also a Legends pinball machine, which you were showing me yesterday, Yeah, is basically an electronic pinball machine where you can do all kinds of different boards in one and it looks really good. I was surprised at how convincing this machine looks to like a real pinball machine. Yeah, it's really cool. I've never really been like super deep into pinball, but they wanted to send one out um, to review it on the channel. And I was like, yeah, that, that's perfect for, you know, the the arcade room that I'm trying to build here, yeah. you know? So yeah, it's a, it's a super cool machine. I, I definitely really like it. And they've added in a bunch of tables. You could sideload tables and stuff like that. So it's very versatile. Yeah, and if anyone's curious, 
I am not going to be buying these arcade one-up machines. These are staying these in are Sean's staying. collection, yeah. which I'm honestly thrilled with because I don't want, I don't want to transport all these. Half of them would probably break on the way back to Kentucky. Um, but take me through some of the boxes that we still have left in here. So um, this is kind. Of, there's kind of a lot of smorgasbord here, but there's a lot of cool items. There's a lot of cool items. Ooh, I would say. In all right, this one. underneath the pinball machine here. Yeah, because I I had family come into town while I'm trying to set all this stuff up. So we've got some box Super Famicom games here. Those I don't care about. I have so many Joy-Cons <laughs> are coming out of my ears. That's a good one. This yeah. Good one. So this is a Wonder Swan, Final Fantasy edition of the Wonder Swan. Whoa. So there's the system and there's Holy the game. Holy cow. I actually bought this um, off a guy who just sells stuff from Japan on Facebook. Yeah. And it, it works great. There's another game in here somewhere. I, um, but yeah, that's cool. Game Boy Light. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. Oh, look, you got Castlevania Belmont's Revenge in there, too. That's a good game to show off, but it has a uh, Indiglo screen on it. Oh, oh that? wow. Yeah, it only came out in Japan, though, which is is weird, but <laughs> it was kind of the timing of it because they also had dropped the um, Game Boy Color around yeah. the same time, so. It's somehow, it looks as bad as a Game Boy, but just brighter. Yes, yes. <laughs> but they're, they're super cool systems. I, I really like them. This is a uh, Knights premium pack. I'm a big fan of Knights, yeah. so you would think I would keep this, but I'm just kind of like, eh, you know, whatever. So this is the, they re-released it for the PS2 and then put it in an art book there and charge yeah. people a bunch of money. We've got a, dude, I have to be honest, one time I found some of these in a game store and I totally thought they were VHSs. Oh, wow, really? And Riff totally roasted me. <laughs> yeah, you are pretty dumb. This is a, this is an item that I overpaid for when it first came out, but thankfully it's gone up in value. Okay. And like, I, I'm so happy for it. It was a 30th anniversary, I am 8-bit, Street Fighter 2 cartridge for the Super Nintendo. So it like has a little cool art and stuff. It's Street Fighter 2 for the Super Nintendo, an $8 <laughs> game. And I paid like, I don't even remember how much it was, but for the longest time, like nobody wanted them. Yeah. And then thankfully, because the cartridge is red. Yeah. Like that's a ooh, red cartridge. Yeah, <laughs> red but Street thank Fighter. Thankfully, it's gone up in value. I need a 35th version of Street Fighter 2, right. please, for my collection. Ooh, I had one of these. I actually still have one of these. Superboy. Yeah, I like those. I like these systems. Yeah, they're really cool. They're, they're basically like a Switch, but for Super Nintendo. Yep. Very, very cool stuff. Um, fun stuff like that. There's a couple random games that I found as I was going along. This is pretty cool. Boxed version of um, Virtual Cop 2 with the stunner. I actually paid like 30 some odd dollars for this a couple years ago, and then it's just skyrocketed in price. Yeah, it, I mean, even just the box art is super cool on that. Yeah, so this is kind of a smorgasbord one of just random Ooh, stuff. Mega SG, yeah, nice. that's a Mega SG and box. Analog system. If you ever wanted to play original SNES carts, on your Super Nintendo Mini. I've got, oh, we've got okay. you covered. We've got you covered. <laughs> Very niche item. No kidding. But somebody thought, I need to make this. Yeah, um, there's a ton of. Random, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where those came from. That's the thing, dude. I found so much stuff. I had no idea like where, I'm pretty sure a buddy of mine sent me that. That is disturbing. And you're probably wondering. Well, it's a wrapped Christmas present. This is a, a GameCube. Yeah, but kind of a special one. No way. Yeah. No way. Does this work? Oh yeah, it's mi it's minty. For those of you guys who don't know, this Did you is... not know that that was in there? I didn't. I had no idea. Like, I look at, when I'm looking at a price charting list, the primary things that I look at are, like, I'll kind of skim the games. I don't look at every single thing, but the biggest thing is average price per unit, okay. right? To kind of figure out how much work am I gonna have to put in. By the way, this lot as a whole is 1,300 items. Yeah. I don't know. Like, no, 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 no. It was 1300 before I stopped counting. It's it's more than that. Oh my, I, okay. Because I got to a point with it where I, I kind of turned into saw, Jigsaw and I was like, we're going to play a game. <laughs> I want to play a game. I was like, this is what it's worth right now. I still have, I haven't even gotten to, because I hadn't even gotten to the consoles when oh, wow. I sent that figure. And I was like, this is what it's worth right now. If if you go ahead and agree to a price like this, it's yours. And, wow! And he was uh, he was the one who jumped on it. Well, I, like, I appreciate perfect. a ton you adding more value in here, and, and more than anything, I mean this is crazy. This was Panasonic's DVD and GameCube player. Yep, I picked it up at uh, Long Island Retro Gaming Expo um, back in 2018, I think. Uh huh. 
Uh-huh. And I actually got like a super good deal on it. And um, he had no, the thing of it was he had no way to test it. Like he didn't have a GameCube power cable yeah. or anything like that. And I'm like, well, does it work? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, well, it, you know, I'm going to look at your business name here. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to hunt you down. Because <laughs> it, it was a very fair price, but it, it works great, man. It's, That's amazing. It's, I have the Eon HD adapter for the GameCube somewhere in there. So I would, I actually have a video on the channel where I, we, John uh, Spawnwave came over. We did the, uh, we had to modify it a little bit to fit this and we yeah. put in the HDMI cable because it didn't come with the component cables, which is like a big high dollar item, but it's yeah. like, HDMI is better. Anyway, did, it, so it did it come with the controller? No, I wish. Hey, I can't complain. If I'm getting the Panasonic Q, like, wow, that's so cool. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a great system and, you know, all the lights, the lights up and all that stuff, it works great. So, yeah, definitely one of the, the cooler items that I've amassed over time. But yeah. once again, if I want to play GameCube games, I'll upscale them versus emulation. <laughs> <laughs> Take that emulation fans. Ooh, I think you mentioned this yep. maybe yesterday. This, uh, to piece everything together here, this is the, okay, so this isn't the modified one. The modified one is in another GameCube. This is the HDMI adapter for the GameCube. So if you want to, you could theoretically, in one of the GameCubes that you're getting, uh -huh. it's a black one. There's one with the top of this missing and part of it cut off because on this, you needed to have, oh, hold on, riff, Fix this. <laughs> Edit this out. Yeah, so this is a, a GameCube. That one's just standard, it. standard edition, basically. Right, and not the not the hacked up one that we did. Sure. <laughs> what? Now, as we take a look at one of our final boxes here, and feel free to interrupt me, I want to ask you another semi-controversial question, which is. Yeah. Are you worried that you'll regret this? No, I, people keep telling me <laughs> you're gonna regret this. I want people to be able to experience games no matter if they wanna play it originally yeah. on a CRT via an RF adapter or if they wanna you know, emulate them or stuff like that. I am all about the gaming experience and as long as I can play the games, I don't care. Yeah, you know, I don't. well, and that's clear also based on the kind of stuff that you have in your collection, like so many different like upscalers and like various ways to play different games and enhance games and uh, I, I just, your appreciation no, for being able to play the games themselves is very evident. A little Game Genie, Genesis 3, which for some reason is going up in price. But yeah, you'll you'll find tons of just all sorts of stuff all throughout. Who knows what thrown in. Yeah, I don't have the back for that, but the adapters. Okay, there. yeah, that's the expensive part. It was fun while it lasted, but nothing lasts forever. It's time to move on and yeah. Philosophical, Philosophical. for the last part of the video. I mean, this is how it is, man. Like, I, I, I don't, I regret nothing in life. Also, at least to me, I am like, I think I have a little bit more of that collector's instinct. Like part of it for me is I also love going back out and recollecting stuff. In the past, I've sold part of my GameCube collection after that series ended. A lot of people gave me heat for it. I sold about 40% of it, kept 60% that I really love. If I ever feel like, oh man, I really want to have those games back, like I'll get to have more fun going and collecting them again. Right, yeah. And so, I mean, it's just, it's cool with me, man. It, it's cool with me. At the end of the day, it's all about video games. And I know we have different, you know, Know, people who love emulation, people who yeah. love physical goods. I don't understand, well, you know, as the great Rodney King said, why can't we all just get along? Like, <laughs> come on, man. Can we all get along? Last thing, before I let you go, before we pack all this stuff up, I really appreciate you having me out here and yeah, selling me all this stuff. I have a small token gift for you from my homeland before I let you go. Okay, okay. Be right back. All right. <laughs> so, Sean, you're obviously mostly a basketball man. I didn't realize we actually both share a little bit of a baseball background. Uh, and this is just a little something that they make where I'm from that I got for you to commemorate the event. Oh, yeah, this is cool. I actually needed a bat just in case, like, anyone tried to break into my house. Right, a little home invasion. Yeah, this is nice. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little thing on there, a little engraving. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, happy to. I thought I thought it'd be a nice thing to at least remember this whole experience. Yeah. By. I really appreciate you, dude. No, dude, I really appreciate you, man. Came out here for a collection and ended up leaving with a cool new friend. Now I'm gonna beat his brain then. <laughs> Everything's finally packed up. I've got a long drive ahead of me. But don't you worry, we're gonna be making a couple of detours along the way, which I think you guys will enjoy. That will be my next couple of videos. If you guys have a collection you wanna sell, my email will be in the description. I'm happy to take a look at it. And if you wanna see the second largest collection I've ever bought, that video is going to be linked right down here. And until then, I will catch you guys 
on the flip. 